This is a collection of the old original um, articles that Srila Prabhupada wrote. Uh, he, he's beginning to publish into the English language the science of Krishna consciousness. And he, he penned this diagram with his own hand back to Godhead. And the sloka goes like this the slogan goes Godhead is light. Oh no, I've just hurt my eyes. <laughs> Godhead is light, nescience is darkness. Where there is Godhead, there is no nescience. Because I want to read this now about the chanting. The science of congregational chanting of the name of the Lord. When Prahlad Maharaj, the celebrated devotee of the personality of Godhead Vishnu, Krishna, and the son of Hirani Kashipu, the well-known atheist, was a mere boy of five years old, he was seen one day by his fellow playmates chanting the transcendental name of Hari, the Lord, Krishna. The boys, who were all born of atheist families, and thereby known as the children of the Asuras. Asuras means demons. They asked Prahlad Maharaj a question, which is nowadays a common inquiry by all busy men. The question was quite plain and simple, and it was an inquiry by the children of the Asuras as to why Prahlad was wasting his valuable time by chanting the name of Hari. They asked him to come out of his place and make an enjoyment of life by fulfilling the utilitarian theory of eat, drink, and be merry and enjoy. This is quite a natural thing for the children of the Asuras, because the Asuras are none but those who know nothing of transcendence, but are always busy with the business of material enjoyment. The symbol of material enjoyment is a combination of gold and cushion, and Hiranyakashipu was made the king of Asuras because his very name suggested that he was concerned with only gold and cushion. Gold is the medium of exchange for all material comforts, and cushion or soft padded bedding is the resting place for enjoying woman and wine. Hiranya means gold and Kashipu means soft bedding. Hirani Kashipu was therefore the king of such materialists who simply cared for gold and cushion, and as such he did care little for the Lord or his name. But fortunately or unfortunately, in order to show to the people of the world that material enjoyment is not the ultimate end of life, but the aim of this human form of life is a mission for going back to God and back to home. Prahlad Maharaj who was an empowered incarnation of the personality of Godhead, as is stated in the Gita, took his birth in the midst of the most stubborn materialists, as the son of Hiranyakashipu, who was atheist and materialist to the bottom of his heart. The laws of appearance and disappearance of the Almighty Lord, or that of his bona fide servants, are different from the laws of nature, and both of them are free to make their choice as to where and how they should appear and where and how they should not. Therefore, it is not at all astonishing why Prahlad Maharaj should have appeared himself in the family of atheists. Thus, a struggle between the theist and the atheist began. The clash between the theist and the atheist exists always, since time immemorial. And for the reason of this, the relation between a theist and an atheist remains always a strange circumstance. Even if the relation is so intimate as that of between a son and father, the atheist father Hiranyakashipu tried to kill his only beloved son Prahlad more than once for the only fault of his son's faith in God. In such a struggle between the theist and the atheist, the theist of course always comes out victorious. That is the verdict of history. Now to come to our original point, we may say that Prahlad Maharaj, thus being asked by his fellow brethren as to why he was wasting his valuable time in the chanting of the name of Hari, generally known as Kirtan, he replied to his friends in the following words, Brother, we have got this valuable human form of life after crores and crores of evolutionary processes. I think a crore means a hundred thousand. Thus this life, although temporary and liable to death, is a very valuable asset, and in this body of our life only we can attain to the supreme goal. We should not therefore waste our time even for a moment and must immediately engage ourselves for the attainment of the prime necessity of life, the object of our material enjoyment being the same in all other forms of life. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending.
takes place in all bodies. So the human form of body, human form of life, shouldn't be squandered in that way.